Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Painting with Apophysis. I am your instructor, Travis. Um, today we will be going over a pretty intermediate uh, technique. I will be working under the assumption that you've worked with Apophysis before, that you understand the basics of how the program operates, Eventually, I will do a lesson on the more basics of how to use a program and, you know, what the main goal is. But today, I, I'd like to start with something that I've had a lot of requests for, and that is how to do my bipolar foci technique. And uh, this is a technique that I, I developed several years ago. Um, it's kind of a interesting technique. You get a lot of different different textures and different shapes and details with it. And it's a it's a pretty fun technique, but again it is kind of an intermediate to an advanced technique. Uh but I'm gonna I'm gonna go over in depth how to do that. And so today I've opened up Apophysis. I've I've gotten started already. I've got my pre rendered blank flame and what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our editor window open that up and look at our nice red triangle that we have here now what I've gone ahead already I've labeled it as such this is going to be the center of our fractal this is what we're going to use to give us the most detail of our fractal and that's going to be on transform one and what I'm going to put here on transform one, we're going to clear out the linear or linear 3D, and we're going to come down here and we're going to put hemisphere in there today, and that's going to be the center of our fractal. This is our center transform. It it's filled with hemisphere. The next step on how I do it is we're going to add a link transform here, and this is going to start setting up our chaos. And what we do with our link transform here. Is this is with this link transform? We're going to use this as our overall shape here. And what I do with this is I clear it out and I put spherical in there. We're going to rename this one to overall spherical. Wonderful. So it says bipolar up here right now, but it's going to change it to overall spherical. Okay, so we're just going to leave that alone for now. And we're going to go back to our red transform, our transform number one, which is our center transform. And we're going to duplicate that. Badoop. There we go. So now we have transform number three. It's our nice green transform. We're going to put spherical on that as well. We're going to call that one base spherical. Because what we're going to do with this is we're going to run this this spherical transform through a bipolar transform and then from tra the bipolar transform to a foci transform. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We're, well, we're going to clear this out of hemisphere, put spherical in there. There we go. Very nice. Then we're going to add a link transform. We're going to clear that out of linear. We're going to set it to bipolar. And as you can see, I've already started doing this. I messed up the first time, the first recording. So most of my stuff is labeled already. Transform number four should be bipolar. So there we go. And as you'll notice, this bipolar kind of works on a interesting, uh, interesting mapping here. If you notice my bright blue blue green dots here you'll see that it never really goes past the uh, plus one and negative one on the y-axis lines here it just kind of stays in between but spreads out across you know the x-axis x-axis indefinitely and that's very important for how we're going to be using that today so we're just going to reset that and then we're going to add yet another link transform. And transform number five here 
isn't going to be bipolar, it said it's going to be Foki. And Foki is important because it allows us to manipulate that bipolar transform. And instead of, you know, it mapping across the x-axis in the way that it was, it's going to more or less create a tube of sorts. And that's important. That's what we want. So we're going to take this transform, number 5, we're going to clear it out of linear, and we're going to come down here to Foki, and we're going to give that a 1. Next, under the Triangle tab, Foki transforms work best under multiples of pi. So what we're going to do is under our Scale button here, we're going to type in 314.159 to give it to scale it up to 3.14159 units. So there we go. We've got a triangle who's, you know, it's as big as 3.14159 units. Then what we're going to do with that triangle is we're going to cut it in half. And it's very important that you do that. You shrink it down by 200%. And now it's at 1.57079. And now you can see it's created these nice little tunnel ends at the ends, or you know, the sides of our mapping, and that's important. Okay, now finally, what we're going to do is we're going to finish setting up our chaos mapping here, and we're going to take number two, transform number two, our nice yellow one, we're going to duplicate that to make it a fuchsia transform which is number six. We're going to go back to number two and we're going to delete that because we don't need it anymore. Now the overall spherical is transform number five. Base spherical is number two which is very good it's as it should be. Bipolar is number three. Foki is number four. And overall spherical is number five. Now what overall spherical is going to do is it's going to manipulate First of all, the chain of regular spherical through Foki, but it's also going to manipulate the placement and mapping of our hemisphere transform. So it's working in conjunction to manipulate all of that structure. So first things first, we're going to go to our bipolar transform here, and we're just going to rotate it, just like that. And now you can see up here in our window, that's given us this very interesting eye type of image and it's got this nice circular ring around it and you can see how all the detail is mirrored around it and of course you can manipulate this transform you can really manipulate any transform except the Foki transform you're going to want to leave the Foki transform where it is so I'm just going to say Foki don't touch And if you want to change how the details are in the center, you want to go back to your first transform. And you can see by manipulating this one, you manipulate the center of the transform, which is why we titled it Center. And see, you've got nice reflections going on here. You've got an interesting pattern. We lost the eye pattern, but we've got kind of an interesting horn, antler kind of thing going on in there. And if you move that transform around, you'll see how it manipulates up in the window and alters where things are iterated. And that's what happens in the center, and that's what happens because we've wrapped it around with the spherical on the outside. Now if you move the bipolar transform around, you'll still notice that it affects the center, but it's also mostly doing stuff on the outside of the center. You'll see that it's wrapping the iterations around our center very interestingly. Now the best way to get the shape and detail that you want, I'm going to make our window just a bit bigger and scale this out and solve there you go. Uh, the best way to get some to get your shape 
in the detail that you want is by manipulating the uh, bipolar transform, manipulating your base spherical transform, and then lastly manipulating your overall spherical transform. And you'll notice that that's inverted the center of our fractal. The center is no longer strictly the center. It's kind of diffused out into the rest of the fractal. And that's important for gaining the shape and detail that you want. Now when it comes to weights, if you want to weight your fractal, the best way to do it, I believe, is in the center. Nope, it's on the bipolar. So you go to your or your base spherical because it's running through the bipolar, and you just increase that or decrease that if you want to. Center you want you increase the weight if you want it to be more center heavy. If you want it to be more shape heavy, you do it on the base spherical. See, that creates very interesting patterns. The other thing you could do is you've got variables under your bipolar transform. So you could do bipolar shift, shift that up by one, you get very interesting stuff there too. And we're going to just reset our center because there we go. So now you can see we've got some very interesting swirls going on in there. Kind of like that. That's very interesting. And the way I color this, I go to the base spherical. And I just change our color all the way over. And just increase our color speed closer to 1. So you've got some very interesting colors going on in there now. That's all about manipulating your shape transforms, which would be your bipolar and your two spherical transforms. Get you the interesting shapes and textures that you want. So that's really how one does this technique. Um, of course there's more advanced ways to use it. Uh, for instance, I will sometimes shrink down the post-transform of my center transform. Ta-da! And then I will shrink down the post-transform of the foci as well. And this will give us a little more to work with you've noticed up in the front, it's kind of affected the whole size of everything. Now we can go into our shape transform and increase, those, increase the, uh, the weight a little bit. And we'll get a, more iterations towards the center of the spiral. Which is good. We like that. That gives us interesting shapes. Move this around. We'll get some interesting spirals. Move this around. Move this some. And then just for just for kicks, we'll add a final transform. Let's put some spherical on that, just to give us a more complex spherical structure. So 
So this is what we have after we've included our spherical uh, final transform here. And you can see that it just manipulates our spiral and such. And we can use that to our advantage to change quite a few things about it. Um, one of my favorite ways to use this technique is uh, is to use two-face, which is linear on the negative side of, of y and uh, spherical on the positive side of y. So if we, on our base spherical here, we use two-face, which is down here, we can get some interesting things going on. Do, do, do. So we get some nice, interesting split, kind of interesting textures and such. Ooh, hold on. There we go. Move that up. And you got some texture differences going on there. And that's fascinating. We could use that to our advantage or rotate that and get some interesting stuff going on. Maybe. And see, this is the joy of using Apophysis and flame fractals in general, is that it's all about playing around and seeing what you like. It's a giant artistic sandbox. And you get different things from playing with different tools and moving our sand a little bit better. Now, if we wanted, we could do this just a little bit more basically. We'll start with our blank flame, as always. We'll just put, uh, instead of hemisphere on our center, why don't we do something like uh, scry, which is a nice, uh, kind of like pre-spherical bubble. Look at that. Look at that. That's interesting. And we'll go ahead and we'll add a new transform. And on this transform, we're just going to put bipolar. 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 And then on our bipolar transform, we're going to add a link transform. And we're going to put Foki on that one again. Foki. Foki. And as like before, we're going to increase by 314.159. And we're going to decrease it by 200 to get 157079. Again, don't move it. Don't want to move that. Rotate that. And here you'll see we have our interesting patterns going on that we had before. And you can play with your scry transform and you get interesting stuff going on there. We're going to move our bipolar transform. And you can see how it kind of gives us these curvy shapes and dips and such. Increase the weight of that. Or do we want to increase the weight of the center? No. No, it's definitely the bipolar that we want to increase the weight of. See, once we, narrow, once we shrink our bipolar transform down and increase its weight, we'll say 2.5. You've got your weight going down the center of the spiral. You've got some nice details going outside there. And you move that around to get your shape that you want. Like that's kind of interesting there. Huh? I think that's neat. And then you throw your linear, or not your linear, your spherical. Spherical final transform or effect transform. And you move that around some. And you get some interesting shape and detail. Look at that. Coloring is the same as before. Coloring is done on the bipolar, which is our major shape transform. And the closer the one you get, the tighter your color will be towards the center. Further away from when you get the more random it kind of looks. 
And that's pretty interesting to me. I think that's pretty neat. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that. There you go. That is how you use the bipolar Foki in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, and I hope you have a wonderful, well, whatever time it is for you. Goodbye.